I just spoke with the G7 leaders this morning, and we're in full and total agreement. We will limit Russia's ability to do business in dollars, euros, pounds, and yen. We're going to stunt the ability of to finance and grow Rus the, the Russian military. We've cut off Russia's largest bank, a bank that holds more than one-third of Russia's banking assets by itself. There's a whole very robust process of imposing sanctions. It involves a lot of lawyers and things like that. So the U.S. doesn't do this willy-nilly at all. I'm Nahal Tusi. I am the senior foreign affairs correspondent for Politico. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. Putin has had many years to prepare for these sanctions. Uh, he's made Russia's economy less reliant on the dollar, uh, a bit more insulated. He's increased uh, trade and the relationship overall with China, uh, increased the country's foreign reserves. By no means is it sanctions proof, uh, but Russia is not as vulnerable as it used to be uh, to U.S. economic sanctions. Uh, and that's partly, I think, because Putin has long kind of had his plans to go into Ukraine. Anyone who tries to be intervene, intervene, to be a threat to our country, to our people, should know that there is Russia's response will be fast. Putin himself is not going to really suffer uh, if we sanction him, even if we sanction him directly. But what could happen, and this is kind of a long-term bet, is that the Russian people could feel really frustrated. They are the ones who could suffer. They could, you know, rise up and protest against him. It could undermine his ability to continue ruling Russia without dissent. It's a long shot, but it's frankly one of the few tools that the West has, um, if, especially if it's not going to go and send its soldiers to Ukraine to fight Russia directly. We're here for one reason and one reason only, to ask Russia to stop. Because it's too late, my dear colleagues, to speak about the escalation. Too late. The Russian president declared the war. One thing that's going to be really important is this question of patience, right? How long can the West impose these sanctions in a unified manner on Putin? These are among the darkest hour for Europe since the end of World War II. We will target strategic sectors of the Russian economy by blocking their access to technologies and markets that are key for Russia. With Europe, which relies so much on Russian energy um, imports, have the patience to maintain these sanctions and other punishments on Russia over time. I have to say, I think Putin has time on his side. He's the one who his rule seems fated to continue for many more years. You know, he doesn't really have to answer to anyone. Uh, he's he's firmly in charge. President Biden has to answer not only to the voters, but also to Congress, also to the courts. It also means that in the United States, you know, things get done a little bit slower uh, and they're not necessarily going to last. If Trump comes back, for instance, to the presidency, he might undo a lot of what Biden has done when it comes to Russia. This isn't a new war. This is a war that's been going on in Ukraine for the past eight years. Russia first invaded in 2014. Putin has been preparing for this. This isn't something he would do without a lot of thought. Um, now, whether that thought is well informed, whether his you know strategy is going to work out, whether you know his uh, beliefs about what the West will do will hold true, that remains to be seen.